Hello makers, welcome to Always Yarn First, a podcast about knitting, crochet, and all the yarny goodness in between. I'm Lindsay and I'm coming to you from Little Rock, Arkansas. And you can find me on Instagram and Ravelry as Always Yarn First. Before we start the episode, I just want to do a quick reminder of the make-alongs I have running. Um, I have one running with my friend Lori from Arkansas Yarn Co. We are making chevron blankets. And you can enter by uh, posting your picture on Instagram and using the hashtag the Chevron Year Itch, or go to Arkansas Yarn Co's page on um, Ravelry and post there. And then also all year I am hosting um, a slash my stash mail. Um, the only rule there is that you have to use all yarn that was in your stash before this calendar year. And to enter that on Instagram, you'll use the hashtag slash my stash 2022 M A L. And you can also enter on Ravelry under my group page. Um, there is a uh, post there for it. And both of those uh, make alongs are running all this year and they are welcome crochet knitting, whatever, just follow the rules of Chevron blanket or using your stash. So, you could technically make a stash busting chevron blanket and enter both of those. So, uh, welcome. This is episode 21, if you can believe it. Um, I have a lot to talk about this week. Uh, I talked last time how I was going to Dallas. So there's acquisition, Dallas stories, future knitting talk in my plans. So, um, before we get into that, if you, that you are new here, um, I am a music fanatic before my love of yarn was my love of music and I love all genres of music. So I name every episode after a song that I like that I feel is appropriate for that week and I link it below. So this week, the name of the episode is shopping bags. She got from you. So you can imagine what that's about. Uh, the song is from De La Soul, and I've posted a link below if you would like to go take a listen to it. So um, down below, I will have um, the timestamps of what I talk about if you want to skip around, if you don't want to see the acquisitions or the goals section. Um, but I will suggest at the very end of the podcast, I'm going to be talking about a really big giveaway that I am doing that I'm super excited about. So definitely stay tuned for that. That will be at the end. So let's get into it. I am not wearing any knitted items. However, I am wearing some acquisitions. So I will get into that later in the episode. But I do have one finished object. That is my socks. These are the Favorite Thing socks. The pattern was by Made for Maddie. Uh, the yarn is Arkansas Yarn Co. Yummy High Twist in the colorway Copacabana. This was a Sack Yarn Society box club colorway, so you cannot purchase it. But yeah, I mentioned um, these Socks were lovely. They're just a little over vanilla sock. If you are just starting socks, this is a great pattern and you can purchase the pattern um, on Ravelry without having had gotten the box. So, and in fact, I love them so much that I think it kickstarted my knitting mojo for socks back. Um, last year, I mentioned that I did the Desert Vista Dye Works sock along where I had to knit a pair of socks with her yarn every single month. And I did that plus extra socks. So I knit a lot of socks last year and this year was not really the year of socks and I haven't been feeling the socks. I knit one in the spring, which was a test knit for Prof Pearl, uh, Nicole. And then this one that came in the box I received. And I kind of was across the room from me. I have my stash of cell striping yarns, which are great if you just want to knit vanilla socks round and round without a pattern. And I'm like, okay, I feel like I'm ready to knit some socks. So I cast on a new sock. So one of my cast ons in the last two weeks is this guy. 
This is, I think, uh, maybe the last episode, the episode before this was an acquisition. So this is Night Owl Fibers in the colorway Sarcasm. So, love it. I've just gotten past the heel. Um, so just generally for my personal vanilla socks, I use 1.5 US 1.5 needles because I am a very tight knitter so I have to go up um, I like short socks but not short like super shorty uh, so my rule of thumb is I do 25 rows before the heel whether that's either 15 rows of ribbing and then 10 rows of knitting or 10 rows of ribbing 15 row or 10 rows of ribbing 15 rows of knitting um, and then I start the heel so that's what I did here and one thing I did a little bit differently this time, they're still vanilla, but I've been watching podcasts where they mentioned that when they change colors with the cell striping, they will actually knit around. Um, so it's not keeping up with the uh, rib pattern, but that first row, wherever the color starts, they knit around to get to that and then go back to whatever ribbing pattern. So I did that. I think it looks really great. You cannot tell that you do that at all. And then the other thing I'm doing is for my patterning is I wanted to try for a long time just to give it a little extra. Again, I'm just knitting. However, when the new color starts, wherever it starts, every fourth stitch that first round, I'm slipping a stitch. So you can kind of see just a tiny bit of like little detailing where the color kind of jumps a little bit. And I thought that was fun just to kind of give it a little something extra. So I apologize if you hear a lot of noise. My dogs are walking around. My husband's working in the office. Um, a neighbor in the backyard is fixing their porch. So there's a little bit of hammering going on. Uh, I'm recording this on a Friday. It's September 30th. I usually record on a Saturday, but tomorrow we're going to be out of town all day. So um, I needed to record today to get it up by Sunday morning. So I apologize in advance for the noise. So anyways, this is my first cast on. And both of my casts on, I casted on last Friday, which was the beginning of the pigskin party. Um... I'm not going to go into details with that, but uh, basically it's a knit along for the whole football season. And you have to have cast on brand new things starting last Friday was the first day. And then you keep track of different things and fill out a form. You're on teams competing. So I'm doing that this year. This is the first year of me doing it. Hopefully I'll stick with it. So both of these cast ons started for that. And if you want to learn more about that, go to um, Boston Gen 1 on Instagram or on Ravelry. It is uh, Down Cellar Studio. You can find the group, um, her Ravelry group, and you can find all the information in there. Okay, so my second cast on, I talked about it last time. This is in my favorite bag by Kelly McDonald. And I have the link below of how you can shop her bags. And this is my tassels in the sky. And if you've been watching me, you're like, didn't you finish that? Um, yeah, the other one was this exact color that I finished, but it is a store sample for Arkansas Yarn Co. And I loved it so much. I needed one for myself. So this is tassels in the sky. This is using Arkansas Yarn Co. Pearl. Uh, which is the slub yarn and uh, it's in peach mojito and then the Surrey silk held with it is just wedding cake or undyed color and I love it so much I did not walk around knitting on it like I thought uh, my big backpack on my back and holding shopping bags and I'm like nope not worth it but I did start it last Friday morning got some while I was away but I basically basically I've been working on it this week. So yes, tassels in the sky. So that is it for cast on. I cast on two new things, finished one new thing. 
So now we are into whips. So this one, it's actually in a bag now. This is just a bag my friend Jessica made, actually my daughter, because her shirt, her Jason Mraz shirt got ripped. And so she just put it with a fabric and made up a cute bag. And then my daughter never used it. And I am addicted to Jason Mraz, if you didn't know that. Um, so I stole it. All right, so you have seen these. This is my um, Hue Loco Emerald City colorway. And I had been knitting just a giant tube. Just didn't want to think about it. I started with a cuff, knit a giant tube. And guess what? I decided to close it up. So now I have one sock minus a heel. So I finished this. So I will be putting in an afterthought heel at some point. And I started the next one. I made pretty decent progress on it, considering. So, yeah. I kind of, again, I'm in the brain space for socks again, apparently. Evidently, Maddie's pattern jump-started my need for socks again, which is weird. Most people, like, want to knit socks in the hotter months, like the summer. And now it's just starting to get cooler here, and... I want socks on my needles. I'm already like thinking about what next socks to be on my needles. So yeah, not much to say about this. You've seen this a lot, but now it is two separate socks. So, okay. I have one I got out yesterday that I haven't worked on for quite a while. So I haven't made a ton of progress on this, but enough to um, show it today. Sorry about the hammering. All right, this is in a bag from Nikki of Nick Knack Knits. And this is what I call affectionately my Advent Granny. I'm trying to find where my book is. This is a crochet project. Essentially a giant granny square that I've just I'm going to have the lap blanket size. So for those who haven't seen this the whole time, I had Pineapple Knits um, advent calendar last year. So I started in the middle in the purple and it was a fade. So you can see where it looks really nice rainbow fade. And then we kind of get all crazy with the colors here. So what I decided to do is, um, Marina Pineapple Knits has a mini uh, mystery club where each month you get three minis. Now, if you're looking for that right now, I think uh, she said through the end of this year with Advent, she's so busy that I don't think she's doing any mystery clubs just till the end of the year. But then they should start up again, I believe. Um, but she, you won't have them up there right now if you look for them. So I decided um, to go ahead and get the mystery set because then the, at least the yarn base from the same dyer will be exactly the same for the blanket. So here's where I'm at. I just actually finished one of the minis yesterday when I worked on this. Let's see if I can find my stitch marker. Okay. Okay, there we go. So you can see where I was at. So I went completely around at least two more times since the last time I've shown it. I better take this off and move it while I'm thinking about it. <clears throat> so I had um, figured out how big I needed it at certain points, so I had canceled the mystery club for me because I have enough yarn for it. I'll show what I have left here. All right, so I just started the next one. She does not name her mystery mini clubs. It just has the date. And so this also came in that box. So these two are left from 
the current box I'm working on. And then I have one more month that I haven't even wound. Pretty heavy green here. So yeah. So after these, I will be finishing up the blanket. And it will be just like a TV um, sitting on the couch or a chair from a little chilly lap blanket. It will be the perfect length. So yeah, I'm seeing an end in sight for this, which is good. All right, so I just call it the Advent Granny. Um, the pattern that I'm using is um, Nitty Natty has a free pattern for it. It's called uh, Scrappy Granny, I think. And um, it's free on Ravelry. So I just use that, except obviously I just kept keep going around and around and around. All right, I have two more. My two garments I've actively been working on. This is in another knickknack knits bag. I got last year at the yarn crawl. And this is my husband's sweater. The single malt. All right, for the noise, trying to hold it up. It looks like a sweater. You can see the s'mores. I've made a little progress, but it's going pretty good, I think. I really like this texture in here. So again, like I mentioned many times, it's a very easy pattern, very mindless. Yes, it has a four row um, repeat with it, but it's so easy. Um, that's what I'm using this for. So I'm using this. Kristen had given this to me last year and I did not get it, how to use it. So it has the numbers on it. So this is my beginning of round marker. And so every time I'm at it, so right now I'm on row one of the pattern. So next time I come across this, I will move down to here and know I'm on row two of the pattern and so on. There's just four rows, so I just use that. And then I, in case I'm questioning myself, I can look over there and be like, oh yeah, this is right. I should just be knitting this row. Um, but yeah, super mindless pattern. This is um, using Knit Picks Wool of the Andes Worsted Weight and the colorway is Grizzly Heather. So yeah, my husband will indeed have a sweater before the end of this calendar year. That was my promise. And I'm going to talk about this sweater later in my next month goals. But it's going very well. And then the other one, which I had just started last time and showed on the podcast. So I've made pretty much a good amount of progress on this one. This is the Staple Linen Top by Hohi Locatelli. Let me see. I'm trying to not lose stitches and see where I'm at. All right, so last time you saw this, it looked very different. So you see my stitch marker here. This is knit flat till you get to the increases here. And then you do the other side and knit that whole thing flat. So I'm pretty sure, yeah, I did the front first. No, I did the back first. So this side, last time you saw it, I just had this flat piece and I was almost done with it. So since then I had cast on this whole other side. So this is the front. It's a little less wide across on the patterning here. So I cast on this, worked it flat, and then got past the sleeve separation, and that's when you join it back in the round. And that's, I find, pretty typical of a Hohe pattern if you've knit any of her um, top-down sweaters. Um, all the ones I have knit have been like this, pretty much. So 
If you don't love knitting in the flat, it's not great. But the good news is once you've um, connected in the round, you're already past the sleeve separation. So um, this is going really well. I'm really enjoying the yarn. Um, again, the yarn is from Arkansas Yarn Co. And it is in her Damask Alpaca Base. And the colorway is Patina. And I just saw Lori this week and I asked her if she had any more of this because I, you know, really am enjoying this yarn and want to encourage people to try it. I know we're kind of coming out of the warm season in the northern hemisphere, but um, she has one color dyed up, but she has more in stock that can be dyed. So I specifically asked about it, telling her, uh, I told her that I wanted to talk about that yarn, how much I enjoyed it. So I'm really anxious to wear it. This is kind of my last um, summer cast on uh, before I really get into like sweater uh, knitting. Although I have still have not finished my summer tank top that I started a few months ago. I just have not wanted to work on it. So we'll see. Maybe just in December randomly I'll want to finish it. So anyways, this is going very well. And that is, I'm doing, I signed up for the Hohe Fall Knit Along. Uh, so that is kind of my entry for that knit along. All right, so that is what I have been working on. Oh, except my Chevron blanket. Let me get that. Okay. So now I have my Chevron row. It is huge. I am very far behind and I'm just not worrying about it. <laughs> There's just so many things in it all the time, right? Okay. So the last time I showed it was at that big old pink marker. I was getting ready to do the border between the colors. So this is August colorway, the Copacabana, the same colorway I used in um, Maddie's socks that I made. So this is as far as I've gotten. I cannot even show the whole thing on screen, but I have six full months worth of colors right now. So what I'm thinking, because it's so long already, adding another like six months seems crazy long. So because I'm kind of like an in-between month, like the middle of the year supposedly, I think I'm going to start doing my blocks of color not as long because I figure that'd be a good time because it'd be half the blanket that the color blocks wouldn't be so long. So um, I don't know if I need to, you know, maybe weigh the yarn to do that or what. So, um, yeah, so I'm going to alter, I think, the next half of the blanket just to make each color a little bit shorter just because otherwise it's going to be so ridiculously long. Um, yeah, but I love it. It's super thick. And again, I'm using the Sock Yarn Society monthly boxes. And then my border between each color is um, graphite is the gray and wedding cake is the white. I'm using all of Lori's sparkle base. And it is fingering weight, but I'm holding it double throughout. So, and this is for our year long make along. Okay, so we're about ready to get into Dallas talk, acquisitions talk. But first, I want to highlight the podcast of the week. So, my podcast of the week this week is Needles at the Ready. Um, this is a pretty popular one, so hopefully you've already heard of them, but if you haven't, it is Kevin and Ray. They are on the East Coast of the United States, and um, they record, I think, every two weeks is usually um, the estimate. Their podcasts are usually pretty long, about two hours-ish, but they are so much fun to watch, and uh, so you need to check them out. So I will link their YouTube channel below this video. All right, it's time, y'all. It's time to get into some Dallas talk, uh, how my trip was, and of course, all the acquisitions. 
So if you're not here for that and just the knitting, thank you for watching. Make sure you skip ahead to see about the big giveaway for, um, yeah, that I'm hosting. So if you are here, let's get into it. So I went to Dallas by myself. Uh, I was gone last Thursday through Saturday. So the Dallas um, DFW Fiber Fest was Friday through Sunday last week. Um, and next year they're hosting again. And I will put up a picture of the dates. I'm intrigued because it says that it is five days long next year. So I'm hoping that means a lot more classes. Um, so to preface this, and maybe I mentioned it before, I had tried to invite many people to go to Dallas with me. Many knitting friends, um, other friends that aren't knitters. I tried to convince my family to go as a fun family weekend. Um, yeah, I went by myself. So um, I was very nervous being by myself because, you know, you can never tell with these podcasts, but I am definitely an introvert, meaning I enjoy being around other knitters for sure. However, sometimes, and I'm like socially, I have like social anxiety. And so a lot of times, even something I'm really excited about, I work myself up in my mind and get so anxious about it. I make myself physically sick and then can't go do the thing I was excited to do. Um, which stinks. So I was really scared that I was going to kind of flake out in Dallas being by myself, that there wouldn't be someone there to kind of help me out. So that didn't happen, thankfully. So, and I had a couple close friends that, you know, were messaging me and like, it's going to be great. And they were messaging me through the weekend and it was awesome. And it was great. So I left on Thursday morning and I decided to, I wanted to go to McKinney Knittery. They were not having a booth at the Fiber Fest and I had never been there before. They were always on my list of yarn shops I wanted to visit. So I, it was about a five hour drive and because I was going by myself and I'm an early riser, I was out the door like right after seven o'clock. I was up and out, um, which was great. I didn't have any problem with traffic. It was great. I got there no problem. And I'm happy I went there on a Thursday because they're, they are in a cute area. They're McKinney. Um, they're like on a town square with all kinds of cute shops and restaurants. And um, they were setting up, evidently that weekend was Oktoberfest. And so some of the streets were blocked off. A lot of the parking spaces were blocked off. But I was going on a Thursday, so... Um, they said it was a good thing I wasn't there on Saturday because it was going to be crazy. So, um, I went into McKinney and I opened the door and I regret not getting a video of it because it's one of those shops you open the door and you're like immediately overwhelmed, but in the best way, you're like, I was like, oh man, I'm going to be in so much trouble and I haven't even gone to Fiberfest yet. It is a huge store. And little less than half of it is all um, sewing, uh, fabric, things like that, which thankfully I don't do. So I could ignore that half of the store, but it was even that the aesthetic was gorgeous. The way they had the shop set up was beautiful. Um, just the amount of yarn in that shop was just so overwhelming. I literally walked through the yarn half of the store and the lady was asking me if I needed any help. And I'm like, there are so many brands in here that I've never seen in person. Like it's very overwhelming. So I actually left to go eat lunch and then came back <laughs> so I could think about it. Um, so, you know, I'm trying to do, you know, focus on, I'm not getting rid of my stash or anything, but I'm trying to be mindful when I add to stash to be like, is it for a project or is it something I don't have in my stash? It could be used with something. I'm trying to not buy a bunch of single skeins of yarn just because it's pretty. But 
this shop to me was the exception to that rule because, you know, when you've been a knitter or crocheter even for so long, it's like you start with the, you know, thrift store or the hobby store yarn, and then you find indie dyed yarn, and then you dabble in this, and then you find a new indie dyed yarn, and then it's like becomes a thing. But there's so many yarns, I mean, to use and try. And this yarn store, like I said, had so many brands I've never seen in person. Of course, because of all the podcasts I've watched, I've heard about them. I've seen other people use them. I've been curious about them. And so literally I got single skeins of everything in this shop because I was using it as a, a yarn tasting per se. Like um, I just wanted to taste all the yarn. So also besides the yarn, just I got Chowger needles because I got this for the Stephen West knit along. I needed uh, the 40 inch needles. So I got that and I got this McKinney knittery getting knit done. I've always seen Nitty Natty wear this shirt and I love it so much. So I finally got one for myself and it is so soft. If you want to order their shirts, they are so soft. I'm telling you. So the yarn, what did I get? All right. So Magpie is a brand I've seen a lot of people use. Um, it, this is their swanky sock. So this is 80% merino, 10% cashmere, 10% nylon, 400 yards, 115 grams. And this is the colorway desert rose. And it is, it does feel just luxurious. Um, I totally understand why people love this yarn. Um, and the other thing too, this yarn store not only has all these yarn brands, but I swear they have every single color available in every brand. Like the amount of choices was ridiculous in the colors that I could choose. All right, then another brand I have seen a lot, and I apologize if I'm gonna mispronounce this, is Santa's Garn. Um, I've seen, you know, people use different products of theirs. So I got one each of these two. So this one is the Mandarin Petite, this is the 100% cotton yarn, and this is, let's see, color 6061 dark gray, 100% cotton, 50 grams, and um, again, they had like so many pretty colors, and I am always intrigued by cotton. You've seen me make dishcloths and things. I like finding good cottons because not all cottons are created equal at all. So, and this one is $7. So, I mean, I feel like there's a lot of yardage here for um, what you get. And so I could definitely make something small with this, add it to my cotton stash. And then this one is the line or lina. And this is the 53% cotton, 33% viscose, and 14% linen. This colorway is 8561 Dusty Green. And because you saw the um, alpaca linen that I'm using from Arkansas Yarn Co., I'm interested in linen blends because I talked about how I have tried to use straight linen and not been great. I couldn't finish it, but I'm really enjoying the linen blend. So this is too small, I think, to make anything. I only got the one, but I kind of just almost want to do like a big old swatch with it to see how it feels in my hands while I knit it. So I'm excited to try this one. Another one that I could have got a full skein to try, but I was trying to be good. I really was, y'all. Um, so I got a mini in it and this is, I think it's by the fiber, the fiber co and it's called Amble wandering souls. And this is a 25 gram, uh, fingering. And let's see, it is 70% wool, 20% alpaca, 10% nylon. So again, I got just enough to play with it. 
I mean, all of these other yarns I got, like I could see a top, a garment, a sweater being knit in them. So if nothing else, I mean, make a swatch with it and be like, okay, this is my gauge. Now a sweater comes out. Okay, I want to order this yarn in this. And again, lots of beautiful colors. It looks more rustic, but it feels soft. It feels nice. It does not feel scratchy at all to me. All right, I saved the best for last, I think. So this one, um, I don't recall ever hearing this yarn before, um, but this one just struck me. This is the table I kept going back to. Like I'd walk around, like I, if money wasn't an option, I would have gotten a sweater quantity in this yarn. But again, I'm like, I'm going to the fiber fest. Like, don't be crazy. So this is Camellia Fiber Co. Um, it says it's from Nashville, Tennessee. So this one, they didn't have any fingering weight there. Uh, this is a sport weight, 100% merino wool, 328 yards. Uh, it's a three-ply superwash, and the colorway is pink amethyst. And, I mean, it's not, it's soft. It is soft. It is not the softest yarn. In fact, this magpie is softer than this. But something about this yarn and the colors that were available, just, I'm positive at some point you're gonna see me knit a sweater out of this, cause it is lovely. Um, in fact, when I was in Dallas, Lori from Arkansas Yarn Co, she couldn't go with me cause she had a booth at a quilt show. So I was kind of like her personal shopper, like I was sending her pictures nonstop and seeing what other, you know, places had and telling her like, oh, cause she's always looking for yarns that you know, she could maybe bring in the shop and I'm like this yarn, this yarn right here. This yarn is wonderful. I, I want more of this yarn. So that is my McKinney knittery purchase. So let me move these out of the way. All right. So from there, I walked a little bit around um, the square, I went in a couple stores. They were super cute. But honestly, again, anxiety brain. And I knew that Irving, Texas, where the hotel was and the convention center, was across town. And I'm like, I don't want to be stuck in like rush hour traffic. So, and I didn't really want to spend a bunch of money on a bunch of shops there before I'd gone to Fiberfest. So I opted out of, you know, walking the whole square. I walked in a couple shops and then I just got in my car. I drove across town. I got to my hotel and he let me check in a little bit early. So I got there at 2.30 on Thursday, checked in, brought my stuff in, did not leave my room all night. I ordered dinner to my room, didn't leave. I got out my spinning machine and I did a little spinning that night. And it was just really relaxing. It was nice and quiet. I was able to fully rest my brain before the next day um, because the reason I really wanted to go to DFW Fiber Fest, you know, of course there's the shopping, but I really wanted to make connections. For me, just like having this podcast is making friends I would have never made had I not done this um, and putting myself out there, putting my brand out there per se. And so I really wanted to make connections, but I was really worried about if I would physically be able to do that being on my own. All right, so next day was Friday. All right, so Friday in this one. So I bring over my purchases from the Yarn Fest. Now again, the great thing about when you go on a trip on your own is that you can do whatever you want. You can go somewhere early. You can stay somewhere late. You can leave somewhere early. You don't have to ask permission. So um, I didn't go in with a budget. My husband hadn't given me a budget, but I knew I did not want to go crazy. But I didn't need to go crazy. Um, oh, there was one more thing I bought at McKinney. I forgot I put all my fiber away. 
This was at McKinney, and this was on the clearance rack. So, fiber. This is Sweet Georgia Superwash BFL. 3.5 ounces, 100 grams of spinning fiber. So, yeah, I got that too. And that reminds me, I need to get out. I got some more fiber at the festival. I'm gonna get that out. Okay, so um, the festival, the doors for the shopping opened at 9 a.m. on Friday. Friday was the first day the shopping was open. They had some classes Thursday, but the shopping wasn't open until Friday. So first of all, Friday morning, again, I'm an early riser, so I went down to eat breakfast at 6.30 a.m. And that's where I met Macy, who is Mace of Skeins. <laughs> she was mortified because usually she is like, all made up, decked out, and gorgeous. Um, and she was, uh, you know, no makeup on, stress, stressed out. This was her first fiber fest that she has a booth in. And she was very nervous, which, let me tell you, she didn't have to be because her booth was the best look looking booth at the fiber fest. If you've seen pictures online, she had a definite theme and just rocked it. So I got to talk with her a little bit, which was really awesome, uh, before I even got to the show. And so I got to the show, and it's funny how you, you have an idea for certain things. There was a specific booth I wanted to hit first, because I had seen a color they had just come out with, and they were going to have at the show, and I was pretty sure I wanted a sweater quantity in it, and it was going to be limited quantities. I went right over to that booth first, looked at the color, and it looked different than what I saw the picture of. And so I'm like, it's pretty, I like it, but I could say no to it, which was great. So how I handled the show this year, I'm probably the most proud of. So I went to BFW Fiber Festival in 2019, and it was my first Fiber Festival. I just went in and, oh, I like that. Okay, I'm going to buy that. Oh, I like that. Okay, I'm going to buy that. And so on. And till you know, my I hit my budget my husband had give me. And then I'm like, oh, well, this, that, I like that better. I should have got that instead. Too bad I already spent my money. So this year I was dead set on walking around the whole place before I bought anything. And I did it successfully. Um, I walked the whole amount. Now, granted, I didn't go in and look at every single item in every booth because you know how sometimes you, if it's a, like a yarn booth, you kind of see their aesthetic and not that it's not great yarn and not that it's not soft, but I'm looking at their color aesthetic and I'm like, there's nothing that's screaming my name. And there's a lot of yarn there. I can't buy all of the yarn. <laughs> so some booths I walked by, but a lot of booths I went in. Every spinning booth, I went and talked to every spinner. I even um, met a lady who was doing some e-spinning while she was sitting in her booth, which was super cool. I got lots of tips and ideas about that as a newbie spinner. Um, and then it was like a little after 11. So that took me a couple of hours just to walk the whole thing. And I went up to the cafe. They have a little cafe in the second floor of the building and I ate lunch and then I really kind of thought about the things I saw that I really wanted that I'm like, Oh, I can't stop thinking about that. I definitely want to get that. So pretty much after lunch and I sat there a while and thought, and I thought, well, what am I going to use that for? Um, I basically went down and did all my shopping back to back to back. <laughs> I knew exactly which booths I was going to. I knew exactly what I was going to purchase. And that was it. So the first thing I did was go to Gritty Knits. I had talked about them, that I was kind of stalking their Instagram before I went. They had lots of great yarn, but I really wanted some fiber for them. So she had fiber done up in all these different ways, which, you know, you see something like this in a braid. And she was super helpful. And I asked what the difference, I said, I'm totally new. So I'm sorry if this is a dumb question. Um, so I ended up going for row legs. So if you're not a spinner, they just are like these short tubes. And 
she said that actually with new spinners that this is um, a little bit easier maybe to handle because these braids from here all the way down to this is connected. So you first of all, you have to pull apart sections or this really long strip to deal with. When you're new, that's super overwhelming, especially when you're trying to work on your tension and all that. Where these are nice and short and they just kind of spread out and um, so bore you with all the details of all the spinning talk I did. But I was pretty determined to get these Rolex. So I got these two, I got two of each of these. I'm just showing you one. And because I really wanted to get enough fiber for some kind of project. So she kind of helped me and how you would calculate that. Of course, knowing that calculations are going to depend how thin or thick you spin it. But I definitely wanted to have enough of something to go for a project. So, you know, I could make two small projects with each color, one of each, or get two of each of these. And if nothing else, like a striping t-shirt, like this would be an awesome rocket tee. So that's what I got for fiber. And that's all the fiber I got. I thought I'd get more, um, but I'm happy with what I got. All right, so next I, um, one place I had never heard of before was Hot Bohem. And this color, this colorway just screamed at me. If you don't know, my favorite colors are blue, pink, and orange. And I'm like, well, I have to have this. And I love tweed. So you can see all the tweedy goodness in there. So uh, this is the Mimi Base Fingering Tweed. Um, and the colorway is the Never Ending Story. So it is 85% Superwash Merino, 15% Donegal Net. So I don't know what this will be. This is a solo skein I got, but the colors screamed at me. <laughs> All right. I talked about Macy. Um, she has a lot of great colors. A lot of her colors aren't in my personal wheelhouse. However, um, she had three colorways for the show. And you could get them in like a three skein set. But uh, again, I didn't want to add a bunch of single um, skeins of like fingering weight without an idea. But I really have since doing that tassels in the sky, I've discovered Surrey and I'm like, I don't have any Surrey stash. So I um, decided to get one of her colorways in Surrey. Now, I don't think seeing it by itself like this is doing it justice. She had a beautiful shawl with all of her um, show colorways up there. Now, this is kind of like a topish, um, like a dark mauve, some reds in there, some blues in there. Um, it kind of comes across brown, okay? Um, but I have a lot of colorways, even single skeins, where um, I have bits of brown in them. So this, I think, would go really well with another skein. I knew in my stash I had things that this would go with. That will be beautiful. So this one is called um, Dirty Cowboy, which is funny. So this is in her full house lace, 74% baby Surrey alpaca and 26% silk. And her booth was out of this world amazing. Definitely the best looking booth there. She totally rocked it. All right. So again, on the Surrey kick and the slub kick, um, I love Diane's yarn, um, Suburban Stitcher, and so she had a new colorway called Marshmallow, and so I got a, one of it in Slub and one in the Surrey Silk. Either I will make another Tassels in the Sky, 
Or there's another project um, you can use a finger, one fingering and one surrey with, and it's a cowl. I'll probably do that one. But again, I love this and the bits of color in here. Just pretty neutral except some pops in there and it's awesome. So yes, happy with that. And then, so you know what my favorite yarn was from McKinney and Henry. I had one booth that I was addicted to at the Fiber Fest. Again, a brand I had never heard of. And when I came across our first, uh, I was like the only one in the booth. So I got to talk to Maureen a quite a long time and she is adorable. She has been dyeing yarn, I think she said less than a year. Okay, so usually when I've seen dyers that are less than a year, their color sense isn't very great, or the yarn base they got is not very soft, it's just okay, till they kind of get in their own. Well, this is not the case with her. So her brand is Charming You, and look at how cute that is. Um, this is another one where I was texting Lori and I'm like, you need to see this woman's yarn. She is the cutest. So this obviously was also her first time having a booth at a festival. Again, did a great job. She was giving away, I didn't ask her if she made these, but she was giving away stitch markers if you followed her on Instagram. I mean, it's cute. So this is her chibi sock. It's fingering weight, 80% wool, 20% nylon. And this one doesn't have a colorway name because she said it was a one of a kind colorway where she, it's not repeatable. Um, but I had to get it in pink. I like pink, but I knew if I wanted to try to convince Lori um, about the yarn, I wanted to get pink to show her. So she has a website. She has lots of amazing colors. Um, so go check her out. Adorable. All right. So I have one more purchase that I got in that time frame. I'm going to talk about them last for a reason. Um, so I was done making all my purchases. And I was sitting there and I'm like, okay, I feel good about it. There was one other thing that I really wanted to look into, though, I knew before I even went to Dallas, which was um, Don Barker, who owns Barker Wool, which used to be called Chasing Rabbits. Uh, she has all these patterns for um, assigned pooling, and she has yarns to go with it. And I wanted to look at the, the I hadn't even bought the patterns. I found a couple patterns I really liked of the assigned pooling, and I didn't know which one I liked the best. And I knew she was going to have all the samples there. So she did have all the samples. Um, so I'm like, oh, I really want to make one of those. So I went back to, uh, this was at the Hill Country Weavers booth. She was there and she had her yarn. And so this is the color I got. So I'm going to be doing um, a shawl. I still haven't decided which one. It's one of two that I'm going to do. Um, but this color is called Sea Shanty. It's BFL, four ply fingering, 100% BFL. Um, approximately 437 yards per 100 grams. So I got two skeins of this. So this is going to be a sign pooling. And if you don't know what that is, um, check Dawn Barker out. Uh, she basically all it is is for the most of the shawl, you're going to be just knitting. But when you get to the color, depending on which shawl or sweater that you're doing, the whole length of that color, you're going to knit a different stitch. Each one is just different what it is. So, yeah, so I got one of those for I can do in sign pooling. All right, so the last purchase I made, it was before that, but I got, want to go in to talk about it because I want to talk about her a little more, was um, I met Sarah of The Sexy Knitter. And um, I don't know if I'd ever heard of Sarah before when, before the yarn crawl, I had mentioned before that I was at Arkansas Yarn Co. one day and Lori had gotten a package in and she I actually have it right here. She got these cute little stitch markers for her, Jessa, and Anna. 
And she was opening up hers and I was ooing and eyeing over it. And she basically gave me hers. And she's like, it's okay. I'm going to order a bunch of them for the yarn crawl. So she ordered a ton more for the yarn crawl. And they are the cutest. So this is an old purchase. This is from the Sexy Knitter, though. I have the Barbie one. It comes in the cutest, nicest little pouch. And then you open up the button. And whatever theme you got going on. I have one of the black heels on a project. So these are high heel Barbie shoes on a stitch marker. She has all kinds of cute ones. I couldn't even go in to tell you all the different ones she has. So I knew that she like knew Lori from, you know, um, basically have, sending her stuff over. And when I met her, she was just super cute and so sweet. And I met her, like I said, I went Friday morning and I was there, you know, right when the doors opened. So it wasn't really crowded. Like the booths you weren't competing talk to somebody because it was crowded. Um, I got to talk to her for quite a while and I was saying, oh, I was so nervous coming and I really was hoping to, you know, hook up with someone and my dream of like going out to dinner with new people. And she's like, well, you should go out to dinner with us. So she had her friend Christine in the booth. Christine is a yarn dyer herself. She is known as Treasure Goddess, which I've also linked her below. Um, and she's like, well, you should go out to dinner with us. And I found out they were at the same hotel as me. And I'm like, are you sure? She's like, absolutely. And I'm like, okay. And so we got to talking and it was just like, she's my people. Like she's totally my people. And so anyways, I'll go in to talk about dinner in a second. But let me show you what I got from her. So this is the first purchase. You can see these. These are owls if you're questioning it. Now, I showed a picture to my daughter and she's like, are those suit sprites? Now, if you don't know what suit sprites are, then you don't watch um, Studio Ghibli anime movies. But they're like little, little dust guys. And so that's what they look like to me and they're so cute. So I bought another stitch marker set. I had to have this one because... I am one of those people. Pumpkin spice everything. That's totally me. So it has a coffee one. And then it has these different colored pumpkins. So there's two each. There's two of that one. Let me show the leaf side of it. Cute. There's two orange ones. And there's two of these like rose gold. I call it dirty pink, which I love. So, so, so cute. So I bought that. Got these earrings. Um, I got one of her stickers, of course. Oh, my other stickers. I did buy a couple other stickers. Suburban Stitcher. I was there. And the Charming You. And then I bought a project bag. She had all kinds of these triangle bags, which I've never had before. But they're so well made. And of course, I got Darth Vader. But again, the colors of the zipper is what reeled me in in the end. And then I also got a bag for my friend. It had dinosaurs. And it's a fabric that you can color on. So it was just um, white the black out, um, dinosaurs, and then you color each of them in with like Sharpie pens, which I thought was super cute. So yeah, that's what I got from Sarah. So I just want to talk a little bit about her and Christine, again, treasure goddess and the sexy knitter. Um, they invited me out to dinner with them that night. We went to Mexican and had the best time. Um, I won't go into it all, but literally, I mean, of course the shopping is excellent and I love all the stuff I got and it was fun. Um, but to me, that dinner was the highlight of my weekend. That is why I went to DFW Fiber Fest was that kind of interaction with other women who are encouraging women. 
you know, when you, I've talked about it before with Lori and the girls at the store, how you find a community of where it's not about competition, but it's about community. And that's how I felt with them. I mean, these are women who are running their own businesses. I dream of doing that. And I'm starting by, you know, making this YouTube channel and videos. And yet they let me talk about my little corner of the world and were so interested and asked questions and gave me advice. And it was just the best, the absolute best. So I just adore them. So yeah, I'm really, really happy. And, um, that was pretty much my trip. Uh, the next morning I literally almost, I didn't sleep in cause I don't sleep in, but I stayed in my room almost till it was like time for checkout before I left. Cause I'm like, I'm just taking it slow. I'm not in a hurry. Nobody's waiting on me. And, um, yeah, it was a really, really great trip. So sorry if that was super long winded, but again, even if you are limited you know, money for shopping. This is why I suggest, you know, going to your yarn shop, going to a yarn crawl, going to a fiber festival. It's not just about the shopping. It is really about the community and meeting different ones. Um, if you follow me on Instagram, you saw I got pictures with all kinds of people that I met during the festival. So I didn't get a picture with Christine, which I'm so sad about. So now I'm just going to have to go visit her. Um, Treasure Goddess evidently has yarn parties at her barn twice a year. And so that is now on my list of things that I have to do. Um, yeah, so that was Dallas. Whew, that was a lot. All right, I swear we're almost done. So we have two more things quickly. Um, it, this is gonna go up the beginning of October, which means goals. How did I do? September, I had four goals and I met every single one. I'm so happy. I finished my favorite thing socks. I finished the dishcloths for a friend. I finished the store sample of the tassels in the sky shawl. And I got past the sleeve separation of my staple linen top. Did all those things. Now, here's the interesting part. Um, if you've watched before, you know I keep track of skeins in and out. My goal for the year is that there's more out than in. Okay, so how would I do after this? <laughs> um, my yarn in for the month was 14 skeins, which means my total for the year is 112 skeins. My yarn out for the month of September is seven skeins. And if you would believe it, I'm exactly 112 for both yarn in and yarn out. <laughs> so that's pretty good considering. I mean, I take that as a good thing. So that just means the next few months, I need to have more out than in, which I can do. But I mean, I got past yarn crawl and a fiber festival and I'm dead even right now. So I will take it. <laughs> All right, so goals for October. I wanna finish um, my first Night Owls Fibers Vanilla Sock. I'd like to finish the staple linen top. I think I can. Um, I want to finish my other tassels in the sky. And I'd like to finish my single malt sweater, the body part, uh, not the sleeves or uh, the neckline. Uh, so that's a lot, especially considering that the Stephen West uh, knit along starts this coming week. Um, so we'll see what I all get done. That might be kind of a lofty goal, but... I think it's doable. The vanilla sock and the tassels in the sky is like nothing. So uh, I think the body of the single malt sweater of my husband's won't be bad. That is, I don't have to think about it. Um, just the staple linen top. And even that pattern is, I don't really have to think about. So we'll see how consumed I get with the Stephen West knit along. All right. So the last thing, if you stuck it out this long, thank you so much. Last thing I have is I am going to have a huge giveaway. So briefly, talked about earlier about when you first find indie dyed yarn and you want all the yarn, but you know, it's not cheap. <laughs> and then you realize how much it costs for you to make a sweater. It's definitely not cheaper than going to buy it. Um, 
it's a luxury. And I find that advent calendars, even more so, are a luxury. Unless you love scrappy projects all the time, um, it's like, are you going to actually use all those scrap yarns? And is it worth it to spend the same amount of money on an advent calendar of scrap, different scrappy colors compared to just going and buying a sweater quantity of the yarn you want and you know you will wear. You know, but then if you, you know, you think, no, I, I, I'd i rather just buy a sweater of what I want. But then December, run, December rolls around, everyone's doing uh, Vlogmas and you're having major FOMO of watching everybody open up their advents because they're fun. It's like a little mini present every day. Who doesn't want that? So in the uh, spirit of this year, really trying to focus on stash and be aware of it, um, I cleaned out my um, scrap stash. So not my full skeins the other day and realized how much I really had. Last year, um, before I started this podcast, I we did a trade, uh, Kristen and Maddie from the We Share Needles podcast, and I, we each made it up like a 12 skein mini set advent for each other with like little bits of stuff in it, little things and 12 skeins. We could use them from our stash. We could buy them. Didn't matter. So we each made up two. So that means we each made up one full advent calendar, but then split it with uh, two people which was super fun to have something additional to open. Basically, we each got to open a 24-day admin. So I decided that I was going to have enough yarn that I was going to make up an advent calendar because not everyone can afford one. And it is a luxury, but they're super fun. So what I have done is I have gone through my scrappy stash and I have Uh, wound up at least 20 grams, because sometimes it's 21, 22, whatever. 20 gram minis, 24 of them. Plus, I found a skein of yarn that is wound up, but I have never used. I will be giving that away. So basically, you will be winning an advent calendar. The one thing I want to say is, I don't have the tags on these. I don't know what the dyer is. I don't know the yarn color. Some are sparkled, some are speckled, some are variegated, some are tonal. These definitely aren't, you know, put together in a way that they may not go together in a project, but it is a giveaway. It's free yarn, y'all. Um, so I know I'd be thrilled if I won something like this. And I'm going to go through my stash of little yarny extra things and put some goodies in there too. Because, you know, yarn and goodies. So it will have 24 um, days of minis, a full skein of yarn, and a couple of goodies all wrapped up for you to open. Um, So what you have to do to enter, you need to comment under this video. I'm trying to kind of get more of conversation going. Like I said, that community, that's what I'm here for. So you need to subscribe. You need to like this video and you need to comment under this video. You will have all the whole month of October. You can comment more than once under this video. That's fine. As long as you're, you've liked it and subscribed also, but you need to comment and then you can do so as many times through the month of October. The end of October, I will pull a winner for it. I will announce the winner on the November 13th podcast. You need to watch that podcast to see if you won. The faster you realize if you've won and can email me, then I can get that sent out to you. So you'll have it by December 1st. So Like, subscribe, comment as many times as you want under this podcast. Um, I will be a couple more podcasts in October. I will mention it again, how to enter, um, because I would love to get as many conversations going as possible. That'd be great. So thank you so much for watching. This is a long one. Thank you for hanging in there. I appreciate you guys so much. 
and I'll see you again in two weeks. Bye.